The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's the Full Melt Show. Are you high? Hi, what are you hi. talking about? This is the Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. All right, hang on. I am not officially ready to do a program of any type, of any sort, until I have my ceremonial cigarette in hand and lit. So, ah, uh, yes, there we have it. Now it's time for a show. Of course, it was uh, it was uh, yesterday when um, we're going over this whole thing about taking ownership of the medibles issue. Let's see if uh, perhaps this would be a better way of handling this. Maybe I could get Mark Mark Cisco on to come on and, and yell and talk about this because I know he's just as passionate about this as I am um, with regards to this idea that if you don't... <sighs> Now, if you don't nip this in the butt, it's going to become a problem. I'm just telling you, I'm not wrong about this. Let's see if we can uh, scare up Mark Cisco to talk about that just a little bit. Um, now, which activity do you like? The cannabis news today? Well, that's gone. <laughs> a false start. <laughs> there was a little bit of a false start to the show today. I... um. I uh, started the show, and then uh, there was a complete audio screw-up with the computer. I think what happened is uh, Microsoft had restarted the computers, and when it did, it changed all the audio settings. And so I had to change them all back um, after the misfire. So we restarted the program under a different title so there wouldn't be any confusion. I could find the right one and delete it. Uh, that being said, um, let me see, Mark. Do, 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 do. Cisco. Um... We're on if you want to come on and talk. Uh, By the way, if you're listening to us, and very few people are during the live portion of our program. I don't know why it's like that. We're trying to fix this with a mobile app. Um, I hate the fat, fat fingers, little buttons on the phone. It makes me mistype everything and then... Autocorrect likes to come around and screw with that again, so it's like a virtual shell game with the word we're typing on the typing on the phone. Uh, we're on if you want to come on and talk uh, live resin. See, it types love resin. I just hate it. Although you know, it's a love hate relationship. <laughs> um, or uh, open. Blast. So the story was uh, came out of the newspaper article. Uh, I think M Live covered it from a Grand Rapids area story, and there was a bit on there. And excuse me, because I'm still sick. I've got this terrible sore throat. It's really left over. It's a month long left over after that uh, marathon broadcast we did for eight days. Incidentally, um, shattering listenership. Uh, records with that broadcast our uh, highest listenership of the entire year was on December 14th most number of live listeners and most number of listeners overall on that single day as a result of that marathon broadcast because we're trying to you know legalize cannabis for adults 21 and over 
in Michigan as a response to the terrible fight back, the terrible pushback, the terrible, oh, I'm going to throw a fit because I don't like the way that you, you, you citizens created the law and we don't like it. You know what? I, I got those actual words from the sheriff right after I moved into Oakland County here, specifically to grow cannabis. Screw you. He, he told me those exact words. I, I came down to the office there. And uh, I was looking to see uh, if they had created any medical marijuana ordinances. This is back in 2009. If they created any mer- medical marijuana ordinances um, in, in the township in which I live. And this all ended up in court cases and all kinds of crap. But it started with this simple request. Can I have a copy of the ordinance? If you guys have any ordinances on, on medical marijuana. And so the township clerk, who was very nice, um, really nice lady, uh, went over and, and got, you know, started. She's like, oh, it's brand new. It, it's very recent. So we don't even have it in our regular file yet. I got to go back to the special file and pull it out of there. So hang on a second. And I'll go grab it for you. So she went and grabbed it. And then she uh, took it over to the copy machine and began making photocopies of it. And it just so happens that the uh, at the township hall there, just downstairs, out front, is a state police post and the sheriff's uh, dispatch. Well, it's not the dispatch office. It's the local, uh, what they call, uh, oh, what's the heck, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, like their local office here in the township area. So the township sheriff's department's down there and the state police are there, but one of the sheriff's deputies from downstairs is standing by the photocopy machine when I'm getting, you know, when this lady is starting to photocopy the medical marijuana ordinance. And I don't know, she asked if, I don't know, she asked me a question from afar because it's way across the building. It's on the other side of the building there. You can see her from, from the counter where she's making the photocopies. And you can see the deputy standing in, in the general vicinity. Um, I don't know what he was doing up there. But um, as soon as the de- sheriff's deputy figured out that, we, that she was photocopying the medical marijuana ordinance, he just started spitting fire, that deputy did. I mean, he, he started saying, oh, you know, that's a, you know, that law should never have been created, he said. And I said, because I said, he started coming at me. He started walking towards me. Like, I didn't invite him. I didn't engage him. I didn't talk to him. He just started attacking me. And it began with, they should never have created that ordinance or that law. That's a law. That law should never have been passed. And I said, you know what? It's not yours to determine which laws and which laws do not pass or which laws and which laws do not get uh, put in place and acted. That's that's the job of an entirely different department of government. It's not the executive branch of government. It happens to be the legislative branch, and you have no business in the legislative branch. And so you don't have any say about which laws get created. You only get to enforce them. That's what you get to do. He didn't like that. He didn't like that at all. And so he came, he started, a, it was literally an attack. I mean, he started calling, oh, you guys are hippies and, uh, and you're all high ons and, and this. And he just went on with the big prohibitionist hammer. And I stopped him. And I said, sir, you know not what you're talking about. You don't, you just need to zip it, is what I told him. He didn't like that either. I said, I didn't ask you for anything. I didn't bark on your door. I didn't, I didn't ask for your assistance. I didn't ask for you to speak to me. Why don't you leave me alone? And he started beating me up more about this medical marijuana thing. And so I said, listen, um, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call and I'm going to make a complaint to your supervisor because your conduct is unbecoming an officer. You're not here to harass me as a citizen. I'm a, I'm a taxpaying citizen of this township and you will not speak to me that way. I've broken no laws. I'm here on official business. You need to shut up and leave me alone. He didn't like any of that either. And I said, I'm going to stop you right there. I said, I'm going to go ahead and now that I've got a copy of the ordinance, I'm going to excuse myself from the area in the interest of saving these ladies the, uh, the, 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 the detriment of listening to this nonsense. I apologize for this man's behavior. I told him that. I apologize for this guy's behavior. And I turned on my heel and I walked out of the building. I said, this isn't the last you'll hear from me about this. He didn't like any of that. As it just so happens, you know, the next day when I called, because I called up there that night right after I got back, right after I left, I called and there was, there was no answer. 
at the uh, sheriff's uh, you know, regular number, the non-emergency number. It was a, a message machine. And so I left a message about on the message machine, and, and I said, I'd like, to, I'd like to, you know, make a complaint, and here's my name and my number. And the next day, I got a call back from the uh, supervisor, from the sergeant in charge. And the sergeant happened to be, hey, here's how it went, here's how it went. He goes, he calls me up, he goes, hey, da-da-da-da-da, this is, uh, this, uh, the uh, sergeant's name is... Uh, Venus, Sergeant Venus is his name. And uh, he said, this is Sergeant Venus of the uh, Lyon Township uh, Sheriff's Station. He says, "Uh, you you left a message on my voicemail. How can I help you? And I said, listen, and I told him the story about what had happened. I told told him the exact same story I just told you. And he said, he said, you know, yeah, you know, that was me. And I said, wait a minute. You're the guy that I had this argument with up there. You're the guy that attacked me in the lobby. You're the guy that needs sensitivity training is what you need. And, and he kind of giggled and he goes, you know what? I'm sorry. He said, I apologize. He said, I shouldn't have said that and I shouldn't have done that. I said, well, thank you for having the candor of, of, of making uh, those remarks. I appreciate the fact that you understand that you acted inappropriate, inappropriately and have checked yourself. I said, but it's and so we, we came to an agreement that uh, he won't be treating me like that here. You see, police police tend to have this position that as long as you don't know where the line is, they'll test it and they'll push it and they'll smash your face into it. That's how police tend to treat the general public because most people do not know where the police rules end and your rights begin. Right? They don't. Most people, most ordinary citizens, don't know where that line is, and this guy just did not know where that line was. I mean, he knew he knew where it was, and I knew where it was, but he didn't know that I knew where it was. And until he figures that out, he's going to be a dick. Um, and he was. And this was the beginning of a long thing that actually began this radio show. In the long term, in the long run, it was that conversation that actually began this radio show because I had no intention of coming on the radio and talking about who I considered to be my friends, the police. I, I used to consider them my friends because I used to work with them, all of them. In this county and other counties in the state of Michigan and in other places in other parts of the country, in Ohio and in Florida. I mean, that was my beat. I'm a reporter by trade. I see these police at these news conferences routinely. So for this guy to turn on me the moment he finds out that I'm a medical marijuana guy or that I have any questions about medical marijuana and the ordinances, teaching myself, educating myself about what they're trying to do in my local area, the fact that you would come and attack me, is absolutely unacceptable. And at some point, it took my suing them to get them to shut the hell up and go away. And I would highly suggest that you take into, you know, if you get that opportunity, that you do exactly the same thing. We'll come back again with more. You're getting the full melt. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. 
Canalock is a patented, charcoal-activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at Canalock.com. Visit Canalock.com to learn more about no-smell technology. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place. All solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox. Ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Dort Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. It's the Full Melt. Radio show. Radio show. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Back, we're back with the break. The breaks go quicker and quicker every day. No time during the break to do anything. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in the political cycle. And when the political cycle comes to town, you got to heed to it, right? I mean... I should probably introduce myself. You're going to end up doing it regardless. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to go on mowing around. You know, It's going to train on behind you if you just ignore it. I say you engage it, latch on, and, and use some of its energy to your advantage. And, and that's that energy works. It's a two-way street. That's like a double-edged sword, like that energy. Uh, people are like, what the hell are you talking about? What? Are you high? No, not yet. <laughs> but... um. What I'm talking about is the, polit- the political train, all this, uh, all this energy surrounding the uh, coming 2016 election year. I mean, all the news cycles are focused on it. The nightly news is focused on it. You got these town hall meetings and you got caucusing happening everywhere. I mean, that's that's what it is. Uh, that's the energy. It's it, it's it's fast. It's strong. Um. Hang on, I'm going to type this. Uh, sorry. Sometimes uh, that's the only way I can communicate with people outside the show while the show's on. Uh, it's, it's a 844-420-TALK is the number for the show. It's a toll-free line. Uh, it's 844-420-8255. Um... And that's what I'm doing is giving this guy, Matthew, out of Port Huron, an opportunity to come and, uh, you know, promote his stuff. He's got some uh, traditional teas and tinctures up there in the Port Huron area. And, and you know, in, in, we serve the entire country, this program, this radio show. We have a lot of local listeners because a lot of people are familiar with me for one reason or another, mostly because of this radio show, in this community anyways, in uh, Michigan as a, in, as a whole. I mean, there's not many people that are in the, medic, the marijuana or the medical marijuana community that don't know about me or this program um, because of the, you know, kind of the, yeah, let's, let's face it, I'm not the kind of guy that will sit by idly and let the world march by. And that's what I'm kind of saying about this political cycle. If you take, if you take advantage of the energy that's coming behind you that's just kind of marching on by, it's like a train or a, a, a bus. If, if it's going, it's moving. It's moving faster than you could probably move, but you can kind of grab onto it, latch onto it, and use its energy in your advantage. It's kind of like riding the bus without a ticket, right? Same thing goes with this politics stuff. If, if you take advantage of the heightened awareness, the heightened alert by the general public during this one year, and insert yourself into that energy. You can really make a lot of hay. And that's kind of what I do with this radio show in general. I learn how to make hay out of what we got to work with. And tell, let me tell you, a lot of times there's not much to work with. If you saw how I cobbled this show together, you'd be like, oh my God, how does, that, how does he do that? I don't know myself how sometimes I do it. Honestly. Um, this is not the re- you know, representative of the show I'd like to do. It's representative of the show I can pull off at the moment. And so when, when, when that political train is moving behind you or in front of you or around you, whichever way it's going by you, if you latch onto it and insert yourself, like I said, you can use that tremendous energy, this 
huge ball of energy to your advantage. You can intercept it and, and, and manipulate it. And like I said, that's a double-edged sword. If, if, if you do that the right way, you've got a lot of people paying attention to something important to you. you you've, you've heightened awareness. You've achieved your goal. But if you're not paying attention, you can get, your, you, you can get caught with your pants down. And the same can happen in a negative way. What do I mean by that? Well, yesterday's show in, in its entirety was just that. Um, incidentally, if you know anybody that knows anything about Thai stick, this is just as a, I should have done this coming out of the break, but I, the, the next segment after the break, we're going to talk about Thai sticks and, and what that means and what that is, because I think people are really dismally fooled as to what Thai stick is, its origin, where it comes from, how it works, what it is. If you ask, you know, we'll talk about Thai stick coming up after the break. Um, but but what, I'm, what I'm talking about, this energy, this political energy, and how you can motivate, how you can use it, and how it can use you in a negative way. If you, if you get in there, if you get involved, if you insert yourself and you aren't paying attention. And what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, yesterday's this, this story about this fire in Grand Rapids, this house fire. It was immediate. I'm just going to read the story to you uh, as it was reported, because I don't think I ever had a chance to actually do that. Uh, I might have to look it up on my own Facebook page because uh, I've, ref- you know, it's a lot of, st- a lot of stuff. <laughs> David Troy, you're 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 ama- you're amusing. I won't talk about what he sent me. <laughs> I can't even respond to it on Facebook because where he posted it, I'm not a friend, so I can't even respond <laughs> to the link that he connected me to. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh, trying to find a different job. Oh, okay. Um, he says he's got a job that conflicts with MMC. I wonder what MMC is. Uh, m- maybe, maybe he meant MMJ? No, because J and C are not. What does he mean by MMC? Medical, I don't know. Michigan Medical, I don't know. I, he's, uh, let's see. He's, whatever, he's getting his slow, this messaging. <laughs> uh, just pick a regular name. <laughs> he wants to call into the, under the code name Napoli. And I just, all right, look, if you're going to come on the show and you want to talk about stuff, it, 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 please don't come on and pretend you're Mickey Mouse or call yourself, you know, Harry Peter or something. I don't, I'm not going to put you on the air that way. I'm just not. I don't make friends on Facebook that way. I don't. If you got a, if you got a fake name, <laughs> and apparently this Facebook name is a fake name. <laughs> um, I just won't put you on the air. I don't, I'm not interested in putting somebody on the air who can't identify themselves in a general way or in a way that people can relate to. And if you call yourself, you know, I don't know, 420 fun or if you've got some weird handle that you want to go by on Facebook, in the first place, Facebook's going to find you eventually and make you change it. They're going to ask for your ID. You're going to have to, they're going to, they're going to put you in Facebook jail until you can show them ID and they're going to make you change that name and then they'll let you out of Facebook jail. In the second place, I've got no interest in talking to you. Um, if, if you can't talk, if you can't go by at least a regular fake name, good Lord, the people in the cannabis community are so funny. They're so worried about being identified. They're so worried about, and and I get it. I get it. I understand it. But most of it is just not a realistic fear in the first place. This is a web radio show. It's not being broadcast. Nobody's going to tune in and hear this on the car radio or at some restaurant somewhere. It's not happening. Unless it's a, you know, there might be a couple of places <laughs> where we could talk them into piping it in. It's not going on right now. In the second place, even assuming that that was going on, let's just make, take your worst fear, you know, nightmare, these people who get worried about being identified. Let's just say it was on the regular radio because, you know, for the longest time, this program was on the regular radio, syndicated across the state. Um, and and you, you come on the radio and you talk. You don't, it's really hard for people to identify you. I've got a really, really fine-tuned ear for voice printing. So, like, I can almost see the waveform as you speak, how it comes out. I can, I've done this so long, watching that waveform getting recorded digitally. I can tell 
certain things about voice that are identifiers is what, is what they are. And um, I have a hard time, even with that special ear, that special training, I have a hard time picking out when friends are talking, uh, like on a Facebook video where somebody's talking or being interviewed, but they're not showing their face. They're showing some item. They're, they're talking about some piece of equipment or some, you know, uh, in this case, it was tie stick. <laughs> um, and I thought, you know, I think I know who that is because the voice print was giving it away. The voice print in my head was telling me who it was, but I couldn't be for sure. And that's all I'm saying about people being worried about being identified on the radio. It's a little, uh, it can be unrealistic. Welcome to the program. Hello. Yes, my name is uh, Matt. I, I I have a job that conflicts with it. I'm looking for a new one, but I uh, I do promote it, and I uh, I use uh, cannabis. Uh, it relaxes me. Uh, I'm now, now, wait, wait, wait. Now you, now you, you, you uh, well, wait. Can you hear me? Can, yeah, I can okay. hear you. So, um, when you came on, or when you were talking to me on Facebook earlier, you said it conflicts with MMC. What did you mean by MMC? The medical marijuana community. Oh, oh I see. I got gotcha. you. I, 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 um, I'm used to people putting MMJ or MMMA, like the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, or the Me- medical marijuana. In, you know, MMJ is kind of like short for that. But I've never seen MMC. Yeah, That's yeah, it. community. I'm sorry about that. You know. No, I just but, it's uh, just it was new to me. I, I I I thank you for showing me that because now when somebody types MMC, I'll know what they're talking about. <laughs> All right, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to find a new job, but I'm using it to get off of uh, tobacco and some of these uh, dangerous pharmaceuticals that they promote. I'm, uh, I believe in organics and uh, natural herbs and healing, and I actually know of uh, a person that used uh, Rick Simpson oil to cure cancer. When right. they say there's no, when they say there's no cure for cancer, you know. Are are, are you talking? Are the initials of this individual M? Uh, uh, M.M.? Uh, uh, M.I. is my name. No, 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 no. The, the per- no, 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 no. The person you're talking about that used Rick Simpson oil to cure cancer are the initials of this individual M.M.? Uh, no, they're not. Um, okay, okay. Actually, it was, it was from a friend of mine that, uh, grows and, uh, and they uh, and I heard through the grapevine that it took them a year, but they used the Rick Simpson oil and they cured cancer with it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a common thing actually, uh, both topically and orally. People are finding a cure to many different types of cancer. Not all of them, mind you. Not all of them. Uh, many of right. them, though. And even even the ones that it's not completely getting rid of, it's certainly inhibiting. It's slowing its growth or stopping its growth. Uh, it's not making it go away sometimes, though, just in some forms. But what you're talking about is an amazing property of cannabis, and um, it's one that's actually not been patented yet. And it makes it really bothers me because, honestly, uh, Matt, I can I just call you Matt? Is that okay? Yeah, just call me Matt. Okay, you know, so, I don't want to. That's all right. I don't so, need to ruin my job. No, that's okay. So, Matt, when, uh, um, the first time I heard somebody tell me that. Uh, medical marijuana cured cancer, I laughed. I laughed out loud with a belly laugh. I thought, what a fool. Uh, the, really? The, the, I, I did. I really did because um, I, I, I thought, you know, there's a lot of things that I know cannabis helps or that, that it has certain properties. It has certain, uh, you know, like for nausea or for pain or there's certain things that I know it goes right to in targets. But uh, when, I, when I heard about somebody telling me that cannabis cures cancer, I laughed. And I thought, this has got to be a joke. Um, and then I started looking at the research behind it and, and, and the actual – these are all still considered anecdotal stories, though, because nobody's studied it in any kind of detail, and there's a lot of reason behind that. But um, uh, there's, a, there's a great number. I mean, thousands and thousands of reports from across the country, people using cannabis oil orally and topically to, to cure cancer. So, like, people with some certain kinds of skin cancer – they're putting this on, and it'll, it'll over a short period of time, a couple of weeks, it'll fall right off in a Band-Aid. A skin cancer. I mean, that's amazing to me. Right. And then when I started, I know, and- there was a guy, there was a guy, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question here in a second, but there's a guy uh, named, um, he's a doctor. Uh, it's escaping me at the moment. Uh, doctor, uh, uh, not Malamede. Uh, oh, it's escaping me. I got Bogner going in my head. I got Malamede in my head, and, and this guy's escaping me. Uh, he's a California doctor. I'll, I'll, I'll find him here soon. 
it'll it'll pop into my head. Yeah. But, but he so and, this uh, this guy. Um, I, well, he put he put this wheel together that shows all the different effects of di- the different cannabinoids and and what they what they target, what they tend to uh, uh, interact with in your body, and and this is all stuff that he's done independent research on and and, and worked with a, you know a couple of guys in Israel who talked you know kind of discovered some of this stuff and have the evidence behind it because they could do the testing over there. When I saw that and I saw that that uh, cellular regulation is one of these functions controlled by the human endocannabinoid system through, uh, through C, you know, CBD receptors. Um, you know, that's what's going on. You're re-regulating the cell with, with, with a particular cannabinoid that has that function. It changes a cell that's gone out of control and is dividing without cause. With device, it's, it's, it never dies. You know, it divides and it doesn't die. It divides again and it doesn't die. And soon you've got this tumor that's no longer functional in your body and that's actually causing a big problem. And, and sometimes it'll divide and some of those cells will spit off and go other places in your body and the rest there and cause cancer there. But, but when he right. showed me that, then I knew that I was the fool for laughing about this. So um, thank you for bringing that point up that uh, people are being cured by, by, you know, cannabis compounds from in the whole plant. Yeah. And uh, two more points. I, I have like 20 minutes left. I don't have good credit, so I have a minute phone, but oh, okay. I, can talk for, I can talk for about another 15 minutes. But one good thing is I'm an artist, and um, it helps with creativity, too. Now, what kind of artist are you? What, what you do, what's your art? What's your medium? Uh, I, I do uh, acrylics, and I, uh, and I make plaques, homemade plaques. I do wood engraving, and uh, I garden, and uh, I'm now, a groundskeeper. That's all I can say, you know. And, uh, well, 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 the reason I, the reason I ask, now, where do you, where do you, what do you do with that art? Do you just enjoy it yourself, or do you sell it? Do you produce it and, and, and put it up for sale? Uh, I, get, I, give, uh, I give some food away, and... Um, I uh, I give it away to family members, and I do sell a little bit to cover the cost of the materials for gardening and water. No, no, I'm ta- no, I'm not talking about cannabis. I'm talking about you said. I said, what kind of art do you do? And, oh, and- what kind of art? I I do uh, I do acrylic art. Um, I do uh, I do uh, I do like canvas paintings, and I do uh, I do plaques. All right, hang hang on. Um, stand by, Matt. I gotta I gotta take you off the air for a second because we're going to break. But um, now you can stay on. It's going to cost you four minutes if you stay on through the break. If you want, you can hang up and call me back after the break. Give it like four minutes, and we'll put you back on. Hang on. We're coming back on the other side of the break, and we'll talk about tie stick and what that is and what that isn't. Stick around. You're getting the bull milk. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. At Book Club, they were asking me what you're doing now, Janice. Blogging. Your blog is just pictures of you in a mirror. It's called a fashion blog, Todd. Well, I've been helping people save money with progressive discounts. So, can you get Janice a job? <laughs> you should have stuck to softball. I was so much better at softball than Janice did. Where's your wife, Todd? Vacation. Discounts like homeowners, multi-policy. I got a discount on this ham. I've got the meat sweats. As good ham, Diane. Paperless discounts. Give it a rest, Flo. Yeah, Flo, yeah, give, give it a rest. Give it a rest. We asked people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad. Yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart, And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. 
visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pets. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. You can hear the Full Melt Show Monday through Friday from 7 until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or Eastern Daylight Time as we're in right now. When we go into summer months, it'll be standard time. Right now, it's daylight time. Uh, you, you, if you get a chance, click through to Spreaker and, and, and follow us on Spreaker. As soon as I get 100 followers, I'm going to try and submit the program to iHeart. Uh, somebody argued with me and said, uh, don't go to iHeart. Don't go to iHeart because uh, it'll interrupt your show with commercials and stuff. And, and maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. But I want to get those likes up anyways. I think it helps with our, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the uh, the Google Analytics and all that stuff. It likes it better when when you got followers, and so please follow us on Spreaker. If you want to find us on iTunes, it's really easy to find us there as well. And also, uh, one last thing, uh, you can download the uh, Spreaker app, the uh, customized Spreaker app we have for the program for this radio show. The Full Melt Wax app is uh, coming in a couple of months, but right now there's a a customized application. Uh, you can listen to this program and all of our former shows. Uh, right there on the web page, you can click on the link and download the apps. Or uh, uh, um, if, if you want, you can uh, find us on iTunes. Click and subscribe. It's really easy to do. Uh, if you know the shape of the state of Michigan, it's shaped like a mitten. And uh, from the thumb area in Michigan, I'm talking to Matt. Welcome back to the show. Hello, Matt. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Sorry. I was, I, I I was, I was back to uh, the creativity. I do... Uh, acrylic art and painting and i recently i donated um a uh, painting to my doctor's office and he is giving me uh art lessons for free plus i also do my plaques and art and it helps with creativity relaxation sleep right. so i so, mean i don't see why it's just not legal everywhere you know what i mean right now i get you i was the reason i was asking about the artwork is because you know sometimes I mean, if you, if this, you just do this as a hobby, that's one thing. If it's something you just enjoy to do. Some people want to take it a step further than that and sell their artwork. And so I know people that, that, that display that kind of artwork and sell it sometimes, and I thought maybe that I would pass that information on to you. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, I... Uh... Yeah, you you got my uh, you got my Facebook page, and uh, I recently got a tablet. I'm learning how to do that, so I uh, I'm gonna upload some of my artwork uh, to it once I figure out, or I'm gonna scan it, and then um, I do psychedelia artwork. Uh, that sounds I, like I it. specialized in the 1960s. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's um, you know I. I... I've never been a tie dye guy. I've never been one of these guys that says, "Oh, I got to stare at this thing and see if it if it melts." Or, yeah, I've never been one of those guys. Unless I was doing acid, and that was a long, long decades time ago. I mean, that was like in my yeah, years. yeah, long time for me too. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've never been one of these guys that you know b- all about the tie dye or the amazing colors. I mean, I you know I was way past that though. After the first couple of joints I ever smoked, honestly, <laughs> I wasn't I'm, right. I'm, yeah. I... Uh, for me, anyways, I, uh, I, it's, that's just for me. There's a lot of people that are all about that. That are you know they're they're you know Grateful Dead and the crazy bears and I mean it's really intricate. No, I dress normal. I actually you know the word is preppy, but I actually normally uh, I'm laid off for the season and I start back up. But jeans, t-shirt, jacket. I you know you see my picture. I got a full beard. You know, <laughs> we were just talking about beards. Um, uh, in a few minutes here, if you're lucky enough, before you run out of minutes and time, if uh, Mark calls, uh, Mark was uh, had guns loaded, ready to talk about um, this thing that I never I never finished uh, explaining on the open of the show before you called, which is this double edged sword with uh, politics. If you get if you if you get involved in the politics of things, or if you get notorious, and you, or you get out in the public eye in this political cycle and and you can use that to your advantage or the disadvantage comes if you if you if you don't take ownership of bad situations and there was this article about an explosion from a medical marijuana grow in Grand Rapids that just you know kind of made me mad because I see these things routinely they happen all across the state and in every state where there's uh, medical marijuana being grown and 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 BHO or butane hash oil being processed I don't have a problem yeah, I know go ahead Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know the guy was doing it indoors improperly, and if you don't do it right, you get that you uh, you get that butane in your system. Well, it's, and it's, who knows that could that could cause cancer. Well, it, it is cancer causing. Let's just clear that up right now. Butane, is it? B- butane, oh, butane. I didn't uh, know that. 
Butane is a carcinogen. It will cause lung lesions if you inhale it. It will cause lesions. Really? Yeah, it'll also cause brain lesions. So um, the the thing is, is that, it, you know, people, you're not supposed to just uh, make the BHO and then use it right away. You're supposed to do something called degassing it. You've got to get rid of the remaining solvent in that product before you use it or consume it. And and if you're if you're doing it with uh, if you're do if you're using it for food product, it's less it's less of a concern because once you've heated it enough, the the butane comes out. You're not you're not there. You know, that's the problem with the BHO as it gets thicker when it when the when the butane is is evaporating off of it. The oil gets thicker, and as it does, it wants to trap in the remaining butane. It won't. It can't escape because it's too thick. It wants to bubble out of there, but it right. can't. So you heat it up. You heat it up, and you make it more viscous. You make it more runny. And then the butane can escape, but it's a low, it's a slow, low heat process, right? It's, it takes a little bit of time. Some people are impatient, but you can't just do that either. You need to put it in a vacuum. You need to, you need to, to remove the, the air pressure around it and it'll puff up like a marshmallow. And then, uh, that's the remaining butane being forced out of it, being pulled out of it by the vacuum. And then, uh, if you release the pressure, it'll flatten back down again. You do it again a few more times on that heat source while it's still thin. Um, it'll it'll get rid of the remaining butane that's that's it, re, re, leaving pretty much a negligible amount of butane behind. But um, right, uh, you're, you'll yeah, never. That, that guy gave. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to get in too much. But that guy just gave, uh, like you said, a bad rep to the MMC community. Well, that's right. And 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 it's not just that. I mean, it's it's not it's not only their fault. I consider it part of our fault. As in general, as a oh. part of the community, because we need to take ownership of this is, of this issue before we get owned by it. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I know what you mean by we, that. We, we've got to educate people, and we need to do it in a common, strong, public service way. Like on this show, I'm going to create public service, service announcements about the production of BHO and tell people, don't do it indoors, ever. The only place you can do no. B- BH butane hash oil extraction indoors is in a certified lab that's designed to handle, uh, you know, uh, fumes that are flammable. Um, it's got to be yeah. under a hood. You can't breathe this stuff, and you can't uh, and you can't have it around any ignition sources. It needs to be funneled away to the out of doors. So if you're doing it and yeah, you like- don't have a lab, do it outdoors every time. Yep, That's because uh, I had a buddy who was doing it in- indoors. It was first time he was uh, not familiar with the process, and the fumes got so bad. I'm like, dude, uh, a little electrical spark. I said, I'm, I'm said, I said, I'm leaving, dude. I don't want to watch your house blow up. Well, you you know? worse than that, you would, you would walk out of that house on fire. It would catch your beard on fire. You'd be leaving that building after an explosion occurred if you were still conscious. And there would be residual right. fire. There would be residual fire in the building. I've seen this happen before. Um, it's it's not it's not a cool thing at all, and it should never ever happen indoors. I don't care what the excuse is. If there's liquid butane in a pan somewhere, it needs to be outdoors all the time. Um, and this is what I mean. Yeah. If you if we don't take ownership of this and teach people before they make these mistakes and make it a mantra of our community, we do not believe in this. And if you do this, we are shunning you from our community. We can't have them as a part of us because this is the one way that police and legislators can get around our marijuana is safer than anything messaging. Because they'll pull up this issue. They'll say, look, marijuana wasn't safer for that guy, was it? Well, it wasn't the marijuana. It was the extraction process. And it's because he didn't know what he was doing. And it's our job to make sure that they do or that, or that they're excluded from our community, that we don't condone this behavior. And that's the message we need to bring to politicians when we come owning that owning this issue as our own and 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 teaching our own people and seeing that we're we're causing awareness to be talked about about this that we care. Then politicians and police have a much harder time of making hay of our messaging. Yeah, and and you know it's weird. I don't even know how I added you or if someone added you, but I've been reading your posts and you do an excellent job. I, and I didn't know you had a radio station, but if you could send me a link because I just got a tablet and I'm learning how to use it, I would definitely. I don't know if you broadcast every night or we what, do every but every it day from something to do every day from seven until eight p.m. We're on the air Monday through Friday from seven until eight, and sometimes on the weekend when we do special broadcasts on remote location. Um, do you, what kind of tablet? Well, that what, that what, is cool, Matt. What kind, kind of tablet do you have? I have a I have a Craig tablet. It's a seven and a half inch screen. It it's, runs off an Android. Okay, so Android. So uh, what I can what I can I, what I can do, Craig, is send you a link to our our Android tablet, our, our Android. I'm sorry, uh, application, 
And um, you can listen to the show right on the app there. Um, in a couple of months, we'll release another version where we can send a link to, or a, 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 what they call a push notification to your to your device that says, hey, we're on the air and this is what we're talking about. It gives a little reminder that, hey, here we are. You can tap it and it just opens right up and plays for you. All I'll, right. I'll I was link. curious, how many listeners do you got before your show ends? Uh, you know, to, to, does to, it tell you? Or? Well, it, no, it does not tell us. On, it doesn't show you the number of listeners on the tab. It doesn't show you how many people are listening at the time. Um, but I see all these statistics here at the other end, so I kind of have a good idea as to how many people are listening live and how many people are listening after we're off the air. A lot of people listen. The vast majority of people honestly listen after we're off the air, but this is why we're incorporating these uh, mobile apps so that in a, in a way where we can push a notification to the mobile apps to remind people that we're on because that's the biggest problem. They forget what, that we're on. They get lost in their daily world, and they're like, oh, crap, I was going to call in and talk about this, but I forgot, and then they go back and listen. But the problem is, is this is a call-in talk show, right? And the only way that you can right. call in is if you're listening live. That's the only way you can participate and have your voice heard. I've, done, I've gone through tremendous expense and, and huge technical hurdles to make it so that I can have multiple callers on talking about, you know, with each other and to, to me about a, cer- a certain subject. And, and, and we're missing oh, the component. So I can talk to other people on your show, too. Wow. Well, well when, when, I, when, I, when I put them on the air. So, like, if, if, like in a minute here, I'm hoping Mark will call. Um, I'm hoping you'll have enough time because we're going to hit break again, and then we'll have a few minutes left in the show. But I'm hoping Mark will call before the, uh, before we're done here, and then I can give you an idea as to what we're talking about because I'll put both of you on at the same time, and you can talk to each other. The thing that I mentioned about the beard, I, you said you're bearded. Um, Mark is bearded as well, and that's why I wanted to talk to you because they both bearded. Somebody said something about they put a they put a meme up that said if you uh, if you're bearded and vape, uh, shave. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it's, it, you leave yeah, the, you that's leave. good. Yeah, you know, I uh, as you see my picture, it's sideways. It's because I didn't learn how to turn it right. I'm, you know, I'm I'm used to a computer, so I'm learning about a tablet. But I actually like a tablet better, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unless I got to do some typing. Right. Well, it sounds like uh, it sounds like uh, you're you're you know kind of uh, spreading your spreading yourself around there a little bit, uh, making making things the best you can. Well. While things change around you, it's it's good to be uh, versatile, I suppose. Hang on, Matt. I, I know you're probably running out of minutes. If you have to go, All I right, understand. I'll hang on. Uh, but uh, we're going to break, so uh, I'm inviting Mark on for the last time. Mark, you got eight minutes if you want to call and be on the show. I know you, you were – guns were loaded, double barrel. Boy, he had a mouthful to say on Facebook. Let's see if we can get him to call the show and express himself on the Redidio. Hang on. We'll be right back after the break. Stand by. You're getting the full melt. Promotional consideration provided by NoSmell.com, pioneering the storage market for cannabis users. The NoSmell patented bag technology offers users 100% smell-proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses. NoSmell.com, so nobody knows. When placing your order for a NoSmell bag, make sure to use discount code FULLMELT and take 10% off the entire order. Learn more about NoSmell technology at NoSmell.com. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn, eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing, and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? (laughs) Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, The Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. 
The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pets. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 810- 259-2571. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Oh, there's so little time left in the program. Mark, you got like eight minutes left in the program. You better get on it or, or forget about it because there's only so much you can do, right? <laughs> you're going to beat the clock this way, I'll tell I you that. If, something great, my um, fill and then if you're trying to find me on Facebook, I've got the, I'm the, I'm the guy that's got the uh, Facebook uh, profile picture with uh, the governor, Governor Snyder, getting kicked in the face at a U of M game by a player who fell over and uh, lost, lost control, <laughs> spun out a little bit. Matt, did you see that picture by chance? Have you seen the governor's picture uh, with um, where he's getting kicked in the face in in, in uh, Ann Arbor? Can you hear me, Matt? Yeah, I can hear you. It was a little fuzzy for a minute. Yes. I still got I still got twelve minutes on my phone, yes. but you have made my day calling in. This has made my day, and your posts I follow them. Uh, every day and i'm glad you're doing what you're doing no, and I, I thank you i appreciate that no i thank you the program is nothing without the people who listen to it so i i, I appreciate that um there was this uh, article and i didn't get a chance to uh read it to people you know flint's now sending out 1800 new notices for past due water water bills can you believe this the city of flint they're sending them bills for past due notices for your poisoned water i i can't believe that they would yeah even... i know it's it's nuts it's crazy I... but Listen, I, I know. I, I looked at a picture of it, and, and there's lead in it. You look at Detroit's, it's clear, and you look at Flint's, and it's yellow. And I, I saw that on your post, and that just disgusted me, the fact that they add fluoride to the water, which if um, I hang no. along, I hang out with a lot of organic gardeners, and if you Google fluoride, it is used to make, uh, it is used in sarin nerve gas. Yeah, well, it's it's a it's people. There's a lot of con- controversy around fluoride. It's it's designed originally to make your teeth strong, but I, you know, I kind of had question about that, especially when fluoride's such a toxic substance by itself. And why they put it in the water supply is beyond me. I mean, if you want to strengthen your teeth, it seems like we got a much better way of doing it than putting it in the water right now. Maybe in the '50s that was a good solution. It's it's no longer the '50s of, of last century. Listen, I want to just quickly, briefly go over the story. It looks like Mark's not going to probably get it. Uh, police say an explosion related to a marijuana grow operation is believed to be the cause of an early morning fire that critically injured a man inside the Southeast Grand Rapids house. The 37-year-old man who's not been identified had severe burns and smoke inhalation from the 12.30 a.m. Wednesday, January 12th fire in the 1400 block off Sigby Street, Southeast. Grand Rapids police did not reveal the specific cause of the explosion other than to say it was from a marijuana grow operation found inside the home. Investigators also found a fish farm at the house. Police said a 29-year-old man also was injured in the fire but was treated and released for burns other, and other injuries not considered life-threatening. The two others in the home, a 29-year-old woman and a 6-year-old boy, were not injured. Police did not divulge whether the grow operation was for medical marijuana or whether the grower was legally registered with the state. City fire officials earlier indicated it was a legal grow operation. And, and then they asked for you know, anybody with information to call the police. It was the second marijuana-related explosion and fire in West Michigan in the last month. Just in West Michigan. Um, a blast in December level part of a storage unit in Allegan County. See, this is not a good excuse either. Just because you're not doing it in your home doesn't mean you can take it to a storage facility and make it any better. You're still in a building, you idiots. Yeah, I know. You're in a building. You're in a contained building that holds air, you know. All right, so I'm just going to... And and chemicals. uh, I'm just going to go over some properties of butane so that people understand the properties that they're working with here. Don't ever do this indoors, ever, please. For your own safety and the safety of others, don't do it. And also, for the safety of all the the, the hard work that we've done in going to put the right messaging in behind the legalization of cannabis or the accepted use of medical marijuana in, in the country. Because all of it gets besmirched by, by people who do asinine things like this. 
So when you're working with butane, you've got to understand that as a gas, as a, as a, as a gas, it's, it's very expanded. So when you're talking about liquid butane, it's 40 degrees below zero. It's 40, belie- it's 40 degrees below zero centigrade. It's 40 below Celsius, right? R- really? I didn't know that. That's new to me. So it, it's very cold when it's liquid. Um, and, and when so when you expose it to the air, it's going to take the heat out of the air. It's going to expand the gas from a liquid into a gas, and it's going to get the volume is going to increase exponentially. It's going to get just huge. Um, and you got to understand that butane as a gas is heavier than carbon dioxide. It sinks to the floor quickly. It's not going to float up in the sky. It's going to go down to the ground very quickly. So if you've ever seen like a cauldron on the 4th of July, I'm sorry, a cauldron on, on Halloween where somebody put a witch's yeah. cauldron out and they put some water in there and they put some dry ice in there. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide, right? It's frozen carbon dioxide. So CO2 is also heavier than normal air. So when you see it bubble over, what happens when it boils over? It it goes to the ground, right? It'll it'll flow down steps. It won't float up. It'll go right down the staircase. So um, this is how butane is, but you have to understand it's heavier than CO2. So it does it even quicker. It goes right to the ground. It seeks the lowest spot. Now, butane by itself as a gas will not ignite. It will not... You won't catch fire with butane as just a gas by itself. It needs another important gas. Do you know what that is, Matt? Uh, uh, oxygen. That's right. It needs oxygen. And, and butane, if you've ever used a Bic lighter, you'll know that uh, it's really hard sometimes to get a Bic lighter to strike. Like, it'll be full of butane, and you'll click yeah. it and click it, and it won't light. You know why? Because butane wants, wants a very specific ratio of oxygen to butane as a mixture before it will ignite. It wants 9 to 11%. If it gets less than 9%, it won't ignite. We're talking about oxygen presence. Less than 9%, it won't ignite. Over 11%, it won't ignite. It's got to be 9 you, uh, to... Go ahead. You just blew my mind because I didn't even think about my lighter, but my lighter uses... My big lighter uses butane. That's I didn't right. even think about that. So, so when, when... Now, mind you, the amount of liquid butane in a lighter, just a standard big lighter... It, the amount of bu- liquid butane that comes in there when you buy it at the store is e- equal in explosive power to a quarter stick of dynamite. It's very explosive. What? Yes. It, it, in a lighter, and I carry that around in my pocket. That's right. But see, again, it's, it's, it's harmless when it's a liquid and it's contained. It's when it's a gas that it has this explosive power when it's got the right mixture of oxygen. And that's what happens. So I'll give you another example. So if you take a, a, a dish of liquid butane, I've seen this happen. If you take a dish of liquid butane and you put a barrier between it, we run out of time. We're almost out of time. If you put a barrier between it and an ignition source that's lower than it, right? It'll, it'll, the butane will actually build up around the, 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 the container. If you could see it, you can't see it though, and it'll spill over the barrier and it'll seek that low in, and it'll so it'll find a flame and you won't see the the flame actually from a long ways away. You won't see it ignite. You'll see the butane ignite. Um, by itself, it'll just um, look like it caught fire spontaneously, but it did not. What it did was it, the, the gas found a, a, a place where there was an ignition source, and just along the very top of that butane, very quickly, like a fuse, um, where it's 9 to 11% oxygen, it will ignite, but it, you won't see it. It'll happen so fast, it's faster than your eye can see, and it'll just ignite the dish like it just lit on fire by itself. Um, when you're doing the actual open blasting, uh, where the, the gas is, there's a lot of it. It's, it's coming out as a liquid and it's expanding. It, you, it's, if you're not doing it outside, it's building up quickly in the house or in a building. And, and as soon as it reaches an ignition source where there is 9 to 11 percent oxygen, it will cause a giant explosion. I mean, it's, um, just, it's just like you had se- several sticks of TNT in the building. Yeah, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but I actually ran down to five minutes, okay, and yeah. uh, I, I got to save them. But uh, when I get some more, I'll call in and send me that link. And I appreciate your show. And uh, thank, you. thank you, Matt. Light, light it, light it up. You got <laughs> it. Free the weed, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. All right. It's, um, All right. I'm. I follow you. You know. All, All right. right. Thank you, brother. Bye. It's uh, Matt from uh, the Thumb area of Michigan. Um. I'm really sorry that Mark didn't get a chance to call. I gave him a chance yesterday. There was nothing. Gave, a hotel, gave him some warning and a chance today. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. I got to call Joe again and get a – I will try on Friday to get a uh, uh, Butters update. Find out what's happening in uh, beautiful Sarnak, Michigan, uh, where the uh, Michigan Hemp Farm is located from the Michigan Hemp Company. 
and uh, try and see what's going on. I know that he was going down to Kentucky to sign his new DEA license, one of the few people in the country doing that. Um, and so he's in the process of, uh, but we got to go out and get an update, find out what's going on with Butters. And last I heard, Butters was, is, is going to be a daddy, maybe a multiple daddy. He might be a couple of pregnancies in play. Also, I made my grand pilgrimage to, pilgrimage to the Sweet Leaf in Flint. So shout out to uh, Bob and Kim and Christine and, 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 oh, there's a whole bunch of people out there. I just won't have time to mention. Until tomorrow, we'll see you on The Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.